Welcome to our presentation on our recent publication on the geospatial dynamics of Tercera, implications for the biogeography of active volcanic islands. My name is Kenneth Rijfsdijk and I'm from the University of Amsterdam. And together with a team of 18 persons, we have analyzed how the area changed of a volcanic island in the Azores and assessed its implications for island biogeography. The dynamic equilibrium theory considers species richness on an island as the result of a dynamic equilibrium in species migration and extinction, which is related to the size and isolation of island areas. However, the equilibrium theory considers islands as static entities that don't change in size. But it has already long been known that islands areas change over time due to plate tectonic, sea level change and volcanism. The species pump theory suggests that island area change influences evolutionary rates and promotes species formation. The glacial sensitive hypothesis argues that climate change and sea level change influenced evolution over the last few million years and its effects becoming larger the last one million years. Here you see how sea level changed over the last 120,000 years, falling and rising between 120 uh, meters, more than 120 meters even. As a result, islands change in size. We currently model the rates of change of these islands driven by sea level change to study how that affects evolution and species distribution patterns. On active volcanic islands, areas are also changing by active volcanic processes. And we don't know yet how rates of island area change are influenced by volcanic activity. That is the reason why we study the rates of area change on an active volcanic island of Tessera in the Azores. And now Rui Quarteau will explain the geological setting of this region. Hi. Uh, I'm Rui Carto. I'm a marine geologist at the Geographic Office in Portugal, and I'm an expert on the submarine morphology of volcanic islands. And so my contribution to this study was on the geospatial evolution of the Sea Island. So, uh, as some of you know, the Azores archipelago lies near the Mid-Atlantic Ridge in a junction of three plates, the Eurasian Plate, the American Plate, and the African Plate. So the islands are located around 1,400 kilometers from the mainland Portugal and around 4,000 kilometers from the USA. So they cluster in three main groups, two on the Eurasian plate and one already on the American plate. So going back to Terceira, uh, it lies in the Terceira Rift, which is a hyper-slow rift, well, extending around four millimeters a year, and is now thought to be broadly the border between the Eurasian and the African plates. So why did they choose Terceira? We did it because it is a relatively recent island. It has only 400. The volcanism is well dated radiometrically. And it has been the focus of a very, very recently near shore marine survey in 2014, led by me, which provided a very good picture of the surface area changes over the last glacial integration cycle. So, meaningly, this corresponds to more or less 120,000 years old. So, now Stacy is going to talk. Uh, about the methodology. I'm Stacy Shinneman, the geoinformatician for the EVAD Institute at the University of Amsterdam. A student named Simon Baus did the majority of the spatial analyses as part of his bachelor thesis, and then I helped with data organization and finalizing the publication. Simon used a geographic information system software called ArcGIS to reconstruct the contours of the island for every 10,000 years from 120,000 years ago. So he repeated the workflow that you see here for 13 separate time steps. He started with present day bathymetric data to determine the coastal contours and the total area of the island. And then for each 10,000 year time step, he corrected for the natural subsidence of the island and for changes in sea level. For example, in the Azores during the last glacial maximum, sea level was at its lowest point, so the island's area was much larger than it is today. He also used geological maps showing landslides and lava flows to account for the volcanic activity that affected the island's surface. Uh, next slide, please. 
So with that workflow, Simon was able to reconstruct the modified coastal contours and also the surface areas every 10,000 years, which then allowed the researchers to visualize and quantify changes to the island over time. These reconstructed contours show periods when the island's area was greatly enlarged by volcanic activity and lower sea levels. He also calculated intra-island volcanic change, which is the amount of surface area within the island area that is influenced by volcanogenic flows. And he calculated how coastal areas were specifically affected. Uh, now back to Kenneth, who will present the results. Yes, thank you, Stacy. Um, so based on our results, we can conclude that sea level and volcanic activity changed the area of the islands on the same order of magnitudes when uh, looking in time steps of 10,000 years. However, volcanic activity is spasmodic and sea level change is more periodic and follows the Milankovitch cycle. Uh, volcanic activity also only leads to area increase by lava additions. Sea level rise leads to loss of land and nearly half of the island was lost in one case and uh, also represent the highest rates of area change on a volcanic island. Coastal lowlands are mostly affected by both sea level rise and volcanics. So they are highly dynamic areas. Our study has important consequences for the equilibrium theory, as we can conclude that on volcanic active islands, the area will increase by volcanic additions, shifting the dynamic equilibrium towards higher species richness. Our study also implies that during the active states of vulcanism, over the life cycle of a volcanic island, vulcanism will have an increasing dominating, dominating uh, influence on geospatial change over sea level change. Whereas during the late inactive states of an island, um, uh, sea level change will be more influential influential and will increase in its influence over time as the island shrinks and reduces in size. So we can conclude that on a volcanic island, biota were forced by geospatial change caused both by, both by sea level change and volcanic activity. We developed a workflow to quantify the rates of area change by sea levels and volcanic activity on an active volcanic island and now we can use this workflow to test how geospatial change affected evolutionary patterns. We thank our co-authors and partners and thank you for uh, your interest in our work. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to send us an email.